An artisan is someone who makes something with their hands or works with their hands and uh, serves the community with whatever it is they make or do with their hands. Whatever the artisan makes or does has a practical and functional purpose. The artist, whatever they make, is something to either adorn a wall or it has to do a representation of beauty of some kind that is not necessarily functional. It will enhance your life. And sometimes the, the term artist and artisan can overlap when you're dealing, for instance, with a potter or a jeweler because it is functional what they're making. But they can also make lines that are perhaps more beautiful or more elaborate and then you see the artistry in it. A baker, um, a pastry maker, those are all artisans. An electrician, a plumber, they're artisans. Um, now you'll find a butcher in a supermarket, but it's not quite the same thing. They're working for the supermarket, not for themselves. Those people who work with their hands, who have a trade, and there's an art to their trade. There is, it's, you just, you don't, you can't just do it. You have to learn it. Uh, I think in this country we make a, there's perhaps the distinction between tradespeople, but actually, originally, that wasn't that way, you know. It, has be it kind of became that way here, perhaps, but that's not the way it originally was. My name is Kiki Rosner. Um, my business is Rosner Soap, and I run my business with my husband, Yaron Rosner. We moved here in 1998 and from Israel after living for many years before that in France. And we opened uh, our door in 1998. My name is Alicia Forsini. I moved to Sugarloaf in 1995. I opened my shop in 2005, and I am a wholesale grower. My name is Nick Zungoli, and I am a fine art landscape and travel photographer. Uh, I came to Sugarloaf to open up the Exposures Gallery back in 1979. After college, I did some traveling, uh, got the travel bug, and I decided uh, after um, I had made a three-month trip to Europe that I would um, at some point, you know, buy a camera like all other tourists and start taking photos. And it kind of led to this obsession that spilled over after I graduated from college. Um, at the time we lived, when we lived in Israel, we had two small girls uh, and we thought of moving from there. And we walked in the street, it was in Tel Aviv, and we saw something that we saw something that we thought it's a bakery. And we went in and suddenly we realized that it's a soap store. There are all these big lofts of soaps and we said, both of us together, this is what we can do. We can make soap. I think that the herbs are a common thread. That's really what keeps me going, the people you meet, the community. And it just kind of was an evolution really of just knowing that the herbs work so well for me. And then when I opened the shop, the intention really was to share that with other people and, and help them understand the plant as well. What we've always tried to strive for is purity of ingredient. I was trained in um, the use of essential oils and base oils. I was trained in the use of herbs. I was trained in the use of um, kind of the naturopathic medicine, if you will. The actual combining of fatty acid and, and, uh, and alkali is not something that I was trained in per se, but the use of ingredients, that I was trained in. There is a, a line that follows from the beginning to the end that stylistically, I think if one was to look at my work, one would say, uh, this looks like the work of one person, which 
I've always thought is the hallmark of someone who has artistic intent, who has a specific vision. All art is really a, is a very high form of communication. I really wanted to reach out to the local community in regards to um, medicine and supplements and it's something that I felt uh, the community would really welcome and, and they have. Well, Sugarloaf is a place that a lot of people come because of the traditions of a, a place that you, is very unique. This place exists for uh, nearly 250 years as a craft place. I work, you know, the flowers are my palette, basically. When I make my spice blends and I'm grinding them and all the colors, making my curries, I consider that art. I live in this community which is quite diverse um, in the type of work that's being done. Um, it is an art hamlet, um, but a lot of the art that's being done here is actually done in, uh, in a fine craft sort of way. So, uh, for instance, there are people who can sit down on a potter's wheel and just kind of pull up a form and then they have a cup. And then there are those people who have that rare gift of being able to control the clay in such a way that they can make these amazing forms into a, a work of art. There, there is a mix in this community. There are not just artisans. There are people that just have stores here. They don't have the same, the same attitude necessarily because for them it's about business. In, you know, in a, in a community such as this one, you have a lot of independently minded people because who does this today? It's not like you're making big bucks, right? For the artisans, it's about business too, but not just about business. There's also that really important aspect of I make this. It's a dance, <laughs> that's all I can say. It's always changing, always transitioning. Um, I've seen people come and people leave and... We just, I think, follow our heart in a way. When we first moved here, there was huge foot traffic in, in Sugarloaf, but that, those people were really hurt in the last 15 years. My customer is the middle class. And when I first moved here in 1998, it was the lower middle class too. And the first people I saw not come back were them. And then the middle class started waning. We have, we've seen a middle class that has been very hard hit. We've seen a middle class that can no longer purchase the way they used to. The changes we made is to reach out further outside of this community. So, you know, um, internet sales and private labels. We wanted to make a, a kind of a luxury product that was accessible to everyone. You know, the problem with the artisan is that they're not necessarily good with people. <laughs> so to, to run a good artisan business, you need to be able to be good with people or else, if you're really not, you need to be able to afford someone who is. <laughs> it's just kind of how it is in, in an artisan community. But I've always kept my door open to the public, so when people come in from Israel, I'm here. <laughs> uh, when people travel from afar and they kind of want to get a sense of Sugarloaf, I think a key to um, a, an artisan business is very much being a part of your business. Uh, we both have few p other passions and I think that this is really important to keep a business when you're not just involved in the business all the time and think that you have to go outside from it and um, come back to it all the time with more energy. What I'd like to actually touch on is the idea of what successful might be. For some that would mean bucketfuls of money. <laughs> um, other people that would be um, accolades from the public. You need to have um, something that people will come back for. I think from all artists, real true artists, um, it's a satisfaction of a yearning that you have to produce something. I do think it is of utmost importance to be good.